Nathan, when when it was it was 2017 that we had this project in Medellin and you were kind of the invited artist for the for this American Arts Incubator. How was how was that experience? How how do you remember that that thing? <laughs> it was an amazing experience actually because I'd uh, never been to Colombia before, so it was my first time. Um, uh -huh meeting a lot of uh, interesting people and artists and musicians and things and, and Medellin. Um, yeah, it was really great. I loved uh, working with all the participants and the workshops and, uh -huh. and wishing to come back. <laughs> yeah, one of these days. We hope also to see you here again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we had actually a lot of fun. I mean, we, we, we had, I know that the topic that you brought is quite uh, sensitive. It is not mm -hmm. easy to, you know, to think about peace and and, and yeah, how is art doing uh, any transformation in the in the period that we have and how yeah it, it was it was really challenging, like to think and but I remember that you said something really really special, like in order to uh, uh, you know to be more peaceful or to to bring peace, what we have to do is to listen. And, and you, you brought all these uh, equipment and, and devices and, and, and you know instruments and all the other experiences that you already had on uh, sound, you know, on, on sound experiences, sound art, and that was yeah, that, that was I think very special. And how how was it here in Colombia? I mean, being how did you find it loud or how was Medellin for you, for example? Yeah. Very vibrant, I would say. Um, just walking around the city streets, so much music and, <laughs> you know, all kinds of commotion and stuff. But it really, like, very interesting for me, especially being an outsider. Um, and now I live in a very rural situation, away from a lot of people. But um, so it was quite extreme for me then, um, as far as the sounds. And, um, it's still a very uh, important part of my work. That's what I do. Uh, sound artist and I pay very close attention to the way things sound and, yeah um, yeah it's... yeah but that, that, that's kind of uh, yeah I, I think it's well sometimes you get really tired of, of so much noise in, in Colombia you know like it's, it's really yeah it's too much sometimes all right so I'm yeah, going I... to yeah so how, how was it for you yeah I was just gonna say I could imagine uh, after a while it probably being crazy for me I just cities in general like no matter what city it is for me after a while that noise does get to me but I'm on the opposite side where a lot of people you know live in cities and go to nature for vacation I'm kind of the opposite and I go to cities for a vacation and I'm really I love all the commotion and the sounds because yeah. I don't hear them usually yeah. uh, for me you know it, it's not really a matter of choice just what interests me um, no matter what I'm doing if it's like more traditional like painting or drawing or making sounds building things with my hands I just find kind of this sort of meditational release that I have to make art it's not really yeah so this um, this image here was a piece called Samadhi um, and I had lived abroad in India and Sri Lanka for a long time before my master's degree and I came back to the United States to do my master's. And this is one of my first projects, which um, takes some of the traditional music of India. And in my degree, it was a digital arts and new media program. So we were working with robotics and things like that. And mm -hmm. I mechanized all of these instruments to perform uh, these sort of really long droney soundscape pieces. And um, I think this image for me um, and that piece shows kind of um, how art is a release for me because I was still, you know, kind of shell shocked coming into my my previous culture, leaving the one <laughs> that I had spent so long, yeah. you know, inundated with. And so this piece was almost a way for me to like release a lot of those feelings that I had and um, kind of reminiscent of the time and um, where my mind space was when I created. Uh, that piece and, and, and actually like India is one of those countries that has this culture that is very rich in colors you know like images imagery 
and, and yeah. sounds and music and it's everything like is they are like very secure of their own beauty so it is it is very special that all that inspiration uh, yeah brought you to, yeah. through through art Honestly, since I was a small child, um, my art has just been a part of our family. My dad is an art teacher at a high school. Um, he's just retired this year, actually, but um, I grew up with art. It was always part of my life. And um, I mean, I can remember from being a small child to like always having a, a you know sketchbook and pens and pencils and wherever I'd go, my parents would keep me busy with that. So. I kind of feel like, you know, it was just born into me. <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, I mean, it's what I wanted to be as a kid. And if you look back to my grade school, you see all of my notes were just sketches. I hardly ever took the notes that I was supposed to. By high school, I had all art classes. And um, it was just never really anything else for me. But no, what I love to do. It's interesting that... that like every child under six year, if you if you give them a, a pencil and, and a paper, they will start drawing immediately. And yeah, yeah. But some some of them stop and some of them continues. And, and yeah, and, and I think this is a, a kind of cultivating the craft and trying to to find things through the making, through the art making. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you know, I don't have an image of this. <laughs> My first artwork. Um, <clears throat> but I would... Hmm. I mean, my first gallery show ever was when I was in high school. And at that time, I was all painting. So I had... Um, and I don't even know if I have any images of that stuff anymore. But uh, yeah, my first... I guess the first artwork, I would say, were... How old were you? Uh, I was probably 15, I think, at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, so you sold your first artwork, the one that you made when you were 15. Yeah. So I guess that's you know my first art show. Um, I was making art, like I said, since I was a child. But to be considered, you know, an artist and artwork, I guess the first show I ever had was when I was 15 years old, and we had me and a friend had a gallery opening. And I remember selling my first piece of artwork um, you know, I was 15 years old. I think I sold it for $100, and for me, that was really exciting. <laughs> yeah, it must be, must be. And, and, yeah. and you know, like, uh, for an artist, it's very important, this uh, practice of exhibiting, of showing the artworks, and, and to, to see the, the art hang on the walls, and, and, and to, you know, to share with with other people, to share with audiences, and, and to, it's, it's a way to validate your own uh, making, your own uh, discourse, or, or your own voice, even. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, I remember, yeah, I had a, an experience like pretty similar. Uh, there was an, a big, a big contest on, on high schools, like inter, you know, inter high schools, like several of them, are, from all around the city they were participating with uh, artworks and we had to go to the stadium to draw an art piece and they will collect all of them they, they were more than 3,000 or something like or maybe 5,000 uh, and they will select uh, the best of them and so then I was selected among the 30 best or something like that like among the yeah I was in the short list of the 30 and, and it was good yeah that that thing uh, yeah it, it's absolutely it gives you this uh yeah this energy and this uh willingness to continue and experimenting with art and and to know what it is and how it does it feel like because yeah somehow it feels it feels nice to to show the art to others This was on a residency I did actually about oh well, a year or two ago. Um, not to say it's the last work because I have many ongoing pieces, but this is a project that I've been 
still developing. Um, these are a series of Aeolian harps, and so they're played by the wind. And this is out in the middle of um, some land in Nevada. Uh, as you can see, if you look around the horizon there, there's no buildings or anything. It's just all nature. And so I put these sound instruments out that as the wind, um, you know, when the wind ramps up, it starts to play the strings and they make these very sort of sometimes eerie melodic sounds. And mm -hmm. On the other side of this, there's holes in it, so it's actually um, to house birds as well. So they're, um, the piece is called Aeolius Way, and um, it's sort of an ongoing series of works that I'm doing involving the environment. Um, you know, man-made structures and things will eventually deteriorate and, you know, fall away to nothing. So I'm kind of like, you know, making these pieces in remote areas and I have a few of these out in different areas all across the US and you know eventually the strings will snap and they'll yeah. cease to play but there are holes in them so the birds can live in them so they're going to move away mm -hmm. so it's sort of uh, ongoing projects that are you know commenting on on human existence in nature and also you know the whole idea of like sound playing I have no idea if the bird like the sound or not, but you know, yeah, eventually. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was about about to ask because it's like, if, if there is no one to hear, does it make any sound? Right, right. Like if a tree falls in the Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Same idea. Yeah, yeah. Ah, it's very interesting. Very nice. And do the birds play the strings? I mean, do they are are they curious to start playing with those? I actually, I don't know the answer to that. I've got a few out in the property where I live now here in Joshua Tree. And uh, um, I see birds all over. I've never seen them like pluck the strings or anything, but um, that's just when the wind plays. And, and how are the strings uh, tuned? Uh, is it is it like a regular instrument or, or does it have... A... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you look on the bottom, there's um, zither pins. Um, it's based off of like a... Do you know what a zither is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they're basically um, tuned like a zither. Right. And the interesting thing about these is that you're not playing the um, the fundamental frequency of the string, it's playing harmonics. And so whatever I tune the strings to, even if I tuned all those strings exactly the same, the way the wind plays it, it'll create different harmonic uh, intervals of the string. So it'll play whatever tune it wants to basically. Wow. Very interesting. Uh -huh. um, well, I could say one thing. <laughs> that would be building instruments, which is <laughs> what I'm doing as an <laughs> uh, Um But really, actually, uh, you know, if I had the discipline, I would have loved to have been an astronaut. I'm very into space exploration mm -hmm. and um you know that to me like nasa and um spacex program and things that are you know mm -hmm. investigating space and cosmos really interest me a lot i just never had the discipline to study for you know yeah yeah all. Well, um, yeah and, and that must be i mean this but this i think is even as hard as being an artist i mean like uh, yeah <laughs> it could be yeah, because there are some very few artists that, that goes to big museums and, and you know to the star system and it's the same of I guess <clears throat> astronauts. There, there are very few astronauts in the world. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah, true. There are not many. All right. All right, Nathan. It's been a pleasure. All right. See you, Alejandro. Yeah, see you. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. <laughs>